Welcome to Real Physics. Today I want to talk about how can we find a new theory. And I think it's an important question because it's not easy to recognize something new. And I got a lot of emails of my viewers, thank you, sometimes claiming, uh, Mr. Ansika, thank you for your channel, but here is my new theory. And thank you, yes, that you take the courage to put forward an idea which as a matter of principle could be something new because this requires a kind of courage and well i know that you have always the internal critic i myself asking you hey smart us who are you that you believe you can find out something that an einstein a schrodinger a dirac and all these geniuses have failed to find out that's a fair question and sometimes it may seem as a lack of humbleness but if you look closer I mean, all these geniuses of the past century, they have acknowledged that they haven't found out certain riddles. They spoke out about the problem of the fine structure constant of the proton-electron mass ratio and so on and so forth. So I think being humble in science means also to acknowledge, yes, we haven't a theory of everything yet. You can try. And on the other hand, you need, of course, some self-confidence saying that, okay, I believe that the contemporary approaches are just misguided. But this is a result of, well, a thorough study of the history of science. And if you do that, I, you come to the conclusion that the spirit of the early 20th century physicists of the European tradition has been completely lost. They're not interested now any longer in what holds nature together in its inmost folds. They're just fiddling around with parameters and classes of nonsensical theories like inflation, or supergravity, or strings, or whatever. Well, after studying all the history, I can confidently say this will go to the junk room of history. And some people may say, okay, that's arrogant, but I don't think so, because at the same time, I have an immense respect for the work of people like uh, Einstein, Schrödinger, Dirac, Heisenberg, Bohr, but also earlier people like Faraday, Weber, Lord Kelvin, Maxwell, all these geniuses. And I think you have, by the way, no chance to come up with a new theory without standing on the shoulders of these giants. It's literally impossible that now someone comes up with a completely new theory, revolutionary theory of physics that explains everything, and there is no reference to these geniuses of the past. It could be, all, it could be also mathematicians like McCulloch or Rowan William Hamilton or whoever, but you have to study history, you have to look at these approaches if you want to have something sound. And yes, if you have done a study like that, you probably will dismiss what is done in contemporary physics. That's okay. Just forget about all what is published in the archive or forget about what is published in high energy physics in the last decades. That's okay. So I would like to encourage you to pursue new ideas, but you have to find the right balance between the self-confidence of saying, okay, standard models are junk, that's okay. But on the other hand, the humility to be aware that you cannot do without these old geniuses that founded quantum mechanics or general relativity. That might not be the last word, but I mean, one has to deal with it. And yes, find also the right balance between considering the old important papers. And we have fantastic possibilities today with the internet we have, we can find new things that's incredible. And on the other hand, don't look all at the daily stuff which is published on the archive. I think that's it's basically chunk and you don't need that. So this is my advice. If you want to find out something, by the way, forget about archive, better go to Vichra and develop your ideas. We need something new. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental physics, subscribe to this channel.